Hello students, welcome back to the next part of the video on built up compression member design. So today we will see the design of lacing system. Design of lacing system. Now to understand this part of the design of built up compression member, you have to watch my previous video, earlier video that is design of built up compression member. Now to understand this design of built up compression, you have to watch the video prior to this, that is design of built up compression number, in which I have given a detailed provisions of IS 800. Now in this design of built up compression member, one video, I have solved a problem, I have designed a laced column problem. So that the problem was to design a laced column, my video was limited to only design of built up column. So the remaining part, design of laced, lacing part, I will be covering in my today's video. So before watching my today's video, better to revise design of built-up compression member video one once again. So let us come back to the design of lacing system. So what is a lacing system? As you all know, when we design a built-up compression member, for example, the one which we have solved in the previous video, suppose I have taken two channel sections and I have placed them back to back or you can place them like this front to face to face okay they have to be connected so the connectivity is given using either the connecting system will be either lacing or by battens it can be lacing or it can be battens so these are the two types of connecting systems to connect these multiple or two or more than two roll steel sections, we use the connecting system. So we have two types of connecting system. One is lacing, the other is batten. In today's video, I will solve the same problem which I have solved in video uh, built up compression member one part. Same I will be doing the design of lacing system. In the upcoming videos, I will also solve the design of battens. So, Design of lacing system. So, what is lacing systems? What are the clauses or the provisions is IS 800? Let us have a look in IS 800. So, on IS 800, if you go to page number 48, 48, complete clause 76, sorry, 7.6 is dedicated to the provisions of laced columns. The provision of laced columns. Okay. So, we will join two main components, we will lace it or we will tie it wherever it is practicable, okay. Then, sing, you have two types of lacing, single lacing and double lacing. So, according to clause 7.6.1.4, when you are going for single laced system on opposite faces of a component, then they must be preferably in the same direction. So, that one is the shadow of the other. One is the shadow of the others. To understand this, let us go to the figure which is given here on page number 49. You can see it's a built up compression member of two channel sections face to face. So it has got two faces. Okay, one is AA face, the other is BB face. Okay, so this is and how a single less looks like. Okay single less looks like. So, the single uh, less should be on both faces, they should be exactly the image. As per 7.6.1 uh, clause which I have just read, 7.6.1.4, uh, I'm sorry, 1.4, this one, okay. Single lacing systems on opposite faces of the component they should be preferably be in the same direction so that one is the shadow of the other. You can see. This is this way. This is this way. So this is face A, this side. And the, this is another face B. So you can see whatever the is there on the face A, exactly shadow image is there on the face B. So this is how preferably, it is preferably that you arrange the lacing system in this way. And this is a double lacing. You can see a lace has started like this. 
and another lace has started exactly other. So this is phase A and this is phase B. So that 7.6.14 is applicable to only single lacing. See its image. Here there is no meaning of having an image. They are same, one and same. So this is one way of connecting the two rolled sections, two rolled sections by using lacing. So the pattern of lacing can also be like this. Okay, it can be like cross here, cross numbers, or it can be just like this. It can be, these are the three ways by which you can connect the rolled steel compression members. Okay, so most popular is the single lacing and double lacing. So now, if you go further into the clauses of IS 800, you can see 7.6.2 is, it will, it will uh, give the uh, ruling on width of lacing bar. What should be the width of lacing bars? If Whether it is bo bolted or riveted construction, the minimum width of the lacing bar shall be three times the nominal diameter of the bolt. Minimum should be three times the nominal diameter. Same thickness of lacing bar. Thickness shall be shall not be less than 148th of the effective length of single lacing for single lacing and 160th of the double lacing. So all these things are given in the IS 807.6 clause. Now one point which I would like to refer, anyhow we will be just going through it while we design the steps or while we solve the lacing. We will be again coming and going through these clauses and as per the clauses we will be designing. So one thing you remember, this is for most important angle of inclination. Lacing bar, whether it is double or single, shall be, incli shall be inclined at an angle not less than 40 degree, not more than 70 degree to the axis of built up member. So this is a very important point which you have to remember. Now, before I actually design the uh, lacing system, first we will discuss what are the steps involved in the design of lacing step, lacing system. So the first step is you have to select the lacing system. You have to select the lacing system. That is whether you want to go for single or whether you want to go for double. First you decide, you have to decide it. There is no criteria. As a design engineer, you have to design. First you select the system of lacing, single or double, then you select an angle. As per IS 800, the angle between the axis of the compression member and the lacing. Suppose this is the axis of the compression member and this is the lacing bar, then this axis of inclination, angle of inclination shall be anything between 40 degree and 70 degree. <coughs> anything between 40 degree and 70 degree. But if you provide any value between 40 degree to 45 degree, you will have maximum efficiency in the lacing system which you are providing. So better we restrict ourselves the value between 40 and 45 degree to get maximum efficiency. So this is how our first step in the design step is completed. Just selecting the type of lacing and the angle of inclination. In the second step, whatever shape you have taken, single or double, find the gauge distance, G. On each side of the, on each side, like suppose this is your built up member. So this side and this side. So both the sides find the gauge distance. And then find the distance A between the bolt centers. To understand this, please refer to the figure which I have drawn here. So you can see this is one compression member with the axis. This is another compression member. They are being connected with lacing, single lacing. You can see it's a single lacing. Okay, it's a single lacing. This is one, this is two. The distance between the two compression member is already in our previous video, we kept it as S, spacing between the two rolled steel sections. 
Now gauge is the distance between the center of the board. This distance is gauge distance. So this can be fixed up following the codal progression. Generally, we go for 50 mm. So we have to find out this gauge distance or we have to fix up the gauge distance and then determine the A. What is A? A is the distance between the bolt to centers. You can see there is a bolt here, there is a bolt here, there is a bolt here. So the distance between center of this bolt to the center of this bolt is A. So from the figure only you can say A is equal to S plus G plus G. So S plus 2G. So in the second, we have found out the distance between the centers of the bolts. Second step is complete. In the third step, we will calculate the length between the two lacing. Length between the two lacing. You can see this is the length between the two lacings. From this bolt to this bolt or this bolt to another bolt which may come here. So that is your length between the this can be the another bolt. So, center of this to center of this or center of this is. So, that is the length between the two lacings, this lacing and this lacing. So, that you have to determine. So, for that, we need to do some geometry. You can see this is angle theta. Axis angle with the member is theta. Now, this is theta and this distance is A. Correct? This is A. And because this is from here to here it is L, this will be L by 2. Fine. So, using trigonometrical ratios, that is opposite, this is adjacent and this is opposite because angle is here, theta. So, opposite by adjacent, A by L by 2 is equal to tan theta or L is equal to 2A by tan theta. This is applicable only to the single lacing. We are finding out the distance between the two lacings. Fine. So, if it is a case of double lacing, if it is a case of double lacing, so this is how a double lacing looks like. Okay. Right. I will draw it again. So, this is how your double lacing. So, this will be my L now. This hold to this hold. Right? So, this is L. This is L. Okay, this angle is theta. Once again, members inclination. And this is A. Okay? So, once again, A is the hypotenuse. Okay, sorry. A is the opposite. L is the adjacent because this is your angle theta. So, this is your A. If I take this one, this is your width is A. So, A by L will be tan theta here. Right? In double lacing, this is complete L. So, L, A by L, this is angle theta, or I can show you here. This is theta, and this is L. So, this is adjacent. And this will be the opposite in this triangle. So, L A by L is equal to tan theta or L is equal to A by tan theta. Just remember the formula for double lacing. So, these two, we have found out the length of the length between the two laces. So, along with this, we are also supposed to find out the length of lace member. That is, I can show you here this this length. This length is L. This is your L. Length of lacing bar. Okay. Once again you can see this is the figure. This is a triangle. L is our hypo hypotenuse and A is our opposite. So A by L is equal to sine theta. A by L is equal to sine theta. So we got Effect, uh, length of the lacing. You can see it is length of the lacing. L. A by L is equal to sine theta. 
or L is equal to K by Z. So, we have found the length between the lacing bars and also the length of the lacing between the two boards this is and this is between this is the length of the lacing. So, we got in step 3 we got the length. So, first we found out the length between the lacing. Second, we have found out the length of the lacing bar. So, once you find out this, then immediately in the next step, you have to find out the slenderness ratio lambda. So, the slenderness ratio is equal to L which you have obtained in step 3 by R minimum. And this slenderness ratio shall be less than 0 0.7 times the maximum slenderness ratio. It shall be less than 50. So, these two conditions shall be checked in step 4 after determining the slenderness ratio. Now, coming to the step 5, you have to find out the effective length. Okay? You have to find out effective length. So, as I have shown you, I have shown you, this is my, suppose, this is the bar, lacing bar, and this is the bolt, and this is another bolt. So, already we have found out length, L is equal to A by sin theta. Now, effective depends upon the end connections, this is bolt or rivet. So, whether it is sing, it depends upon the end condition. But here in case of lacing, the effective length is fixed. If it is single lacing, this one, double lacing is this one. So, if it is single lacing, then effective length of lacing bar is the obtained length that is A by sin theta. If it is a double lacing, then it is 0 0.7 times the L. So, these two are for bolted lacing system. If lacing system is welded, then whether it is single or double, the value of effective length is 0 0.7 L only. So, this is how our step 5 is completed. Then in step 6, we will have to fix the thickness. So, again to fix the thickness, we have to refer IS 800. You can see 7.6.3. Effective thickness. The thickness of the flat lacing bar shall not be less than, shall not be less than 1 40th of its effective length for single lacing and 1 60th of effective length for double lacing. So, let us come back. So, this is effective length. So, whether it is effective length or whether it is L does, doesn't matter. So, thickness shall be more than effective length by 40 for single lacing. And for double lacing, it should be effective length that is 0 0.7 L by 60. So, this has to be kept in mind when we design the lacing system. That is when we fix up the thickness of the lacing. Okay. Now, after you determine thickness, after you fix up the thickness, here you have to find out the maximum slenderness ratio for the flats that is for the lacings. So the formula again it is given in IS 800 in the same line the slenderness ratio of la lacing is given as effective length multiplied by root 12 by t. You have found t in the step 6. Same t you have to use and this shall be less than 145. This shall be less than 145. Okay. This shall be less than 150. So, after that, step 8. Step 8 is determine the design strength. Okay. Determine the design strength. So, we will be requiring FBD. If it is available, we can find out here only or otherwise after we find out FCD, we will come back to this. So, in this step, we are finding out the design strength. And in step 9, again from IS. 800, IS 800, if you go to the design here, design of lacing, you can see 7.6.6.1, the lacing shall be proportioned to resist a total transfer shear equal to 2.5% of axial force in the member. So, transfer shear you have to find out. Transverse shear as per IS 800 is equal to 2.5%. 5% of the axial load in the member. Okay. So, in my 
problem it was 1000 km so 2.5 percent of 1000 km then also you have to find out the force in the each lacing like your lacing is like this fine this is one lace you will have another lace starting from here then again one more lace single lacing i'm showing like this it continued till the length for the entire length of the compression member so after you have found out the transverse shear you also have to find out the force f in this lacing like this you have to find out f in the lacing bars in each lacing how many lacings are coming in each lacing then step 10 determine the compressive stress fcd and tensile stress this shall be less than the permissible compressive stress and tensile stress so how to find out all this we will see in the problem then with this step 10 the design of lacing system will be completed you have found the length of lacing member you have found the width of the lacing member you have found the thickness of the lacing form member and you have checked it how much transverse shear force is coming how much compressive force uh, how much uh, force is coming in the lacing bar and then you have checked whether your uh, stress is coming in the uh, whether it's compressive stress or tensile stress coming in the lacing system is less than the permissible or not this you have completed so with the step 10 your design problem of lacing system will be completed but laces have to be connected to the compression member using bolts so if this is the compression member and if this is the compression member they have to be connected using bolts so you should know what should be the diameter of bolt and what should be the spacing of the bolt number of bolts so connections end connections we have to do now so end connections like this number of bolt so that we have to do in step 11 select the diameter of bolt any the diameter of bolt and then find the minimum width from the clause which i already discussed okay select the diameter of bolt and then find the minimum width of the flat the number of bolts required will be the force which you have calculated in step 9 divided by the bolt value so how do you get the bolt value least of tdg that is gross strength of the bolt and tdn connections we have seen this in the connections so least of tdg and tdn will be the bolt value so with this we will get the number of bolts the last step will be design the end connections for the lacing system that is check whether the number of bolts what you got is sufficient to withstand the load or not that you check it the problem is complete you have designed the lacing system and you have designed the connections also so these are the 12 steps involved in the design of lacing system so when a question comes to design a laced column it's complete first you have to design the members based on the section modulus required then connectivity that is lacing all these 12 steps though there are 12 in numbers but when we solve it it will take very less time because all steps are very very small so following each step you can complete the design of lacing system so the problem continuation of the problem of my earlier video that is design of compression built up compression member one will be continued in my next video so after you complete this video we can move to my next video where i will be continuing the design of the built up member laced built up compression member so don't miss to watch my next video for the design of lacing system Bye, everyone.